Hello everyone and welcome back. In this video, we are going to show you how to remove the anterior abdominal wall and explore the peritoneum and peritoneal cavity as well as the contents in the peritoneal cavity. As always, we need to orient ourselves to the, to the area. This is the right side of the uh, cadaver. Here is the left side, the bottom part, and the top part. Let's begin. Look at the attachment of the um, greater omentum or the other parts of the abdominal contents to the anterior abdominal wall. And you can detach them with your, with your finger. So when you actually reflect the anterior abdominal wall, you want to make sure that you explore the falciform ligament uh, which is this one, is the ligament actually attaches the liver to the anterior abdominal wall, okay? And also on the inferior border of the falciform ligament, um, when you palpate this area, um, you will feel uh, like a thickness that is the round ligament of liver or ligamentum teres hepatis, which comes uh, to the umbilicus. That is the obliterated umbilical vein, okay? And also on this side, I can see the attachment. So I'm going to detach them and look at on this side, on the left side, a little bit attachment of the abdominal content to the anterior abdominal wall, not very much, which is good. Okay, so I examine on the left side and then on the right side, I'm going to actually save the falciform ligament. Detachment of the greater momentum is being done. And the next step, I'm going to hold the anterior abdominal wall, pull it up, and I know I make, I make sure that I detach from the abdominal contents. Then I cut along the anterior abdominal wall on the sides. Now here what we have is the greater momentum hanging from the greater curvature of the, uh, of the, of the stomach. So we have done a little bit of cleaning. Um, now we are ready to explore the abdominal cavity. So we start with a fold of peritoneum, the greater momentum, this membrane, as I mentioned before, is, is, is uh, actually it attaches to the greater curvature of the stomach here, okay? And also it comes down to attach to the transverse colon, we will see in a second. So in order to explore the abdominal cavity, we find the greater momentum, we pull this down, and then we are looking actually the area that usually is, recall, is named as supracolic region, which is above the transverse colon. That is the area that we have the foregut organs, okay? So on this area, what we can see, we saw that actually before, the falciform ligament, we, have, we had to detach it from the anterior abdominal wall. The round ligament of liver, or ligamentum teres hepatis, this is structure, which is the obliterated umbilical vein. We can see that as well. Okay, then we start from here, we pull the greater momentum down. So this is structured here is the stomach. Uh, in order to actually find different parts of the stomach, we refer you to the foregut organs video, okay? So then here's the stomach, then we come all the way down, all the way actually to the right side. Now, what we see here, because this person actually had kind of surgery in this area, we can, we can appreciate that there is a lot of attachment between the content, the abdominal contents, and, and also the liver here. So, and this structure is gallbladder. It should be a little bit more obvious rather than this. So here is a little bit attachment here. I'm gonna detach it, um, this connective tissue. 
okay okay now what we need to do is to explore the lesser omentum in order to do that we are going to pull the this the left lobe of the liver superiorly okay I pull the stomach to the left and this is structure here right there that is lesser omentum which is a stretch between the stomach and duodenum the first part of duodenum and the liver okay so on the free border of the lesser omentum which is this one I can pass my finger beyond the free border of the lesser omentum my finger is passing through a hole known as epipleic foramen of Winslow epipleic foramen or omental foramen also it's called omental foramen so my finger passing through that foramen now my finger is inside the lesser sac lesser sac is the space behind the lesser omentum and the stomach and then in that sense the less the rest of the abdominal cavity is referred to as greater peritoneal sac that one is lesser peritoneal sac and the rest is called greater peritoneal sac okay now my finger is inside the um, foramen of Winslow and the, the tip of my finger is poking to the lesser omentum. That part of the lesser omentum is hepatogastric ligament and this part of the lesser omentum um, right here which is a stretch between the liver and the first part of duodenum is referred to as hepatoduodenal ligament. Hepatoduodenal ligament. Then lesser omentum is made by these two ligaments. Okay? Also, in the foregut region, we can go all the way to the, to the left side. Okay, we can put our hand on the left side. We go all the way in. Then we can pull the, the spleen out. So that is the spleen in this person. And you can see indentation actually on the border of the, of the, uh, of the spleen. Okay? So when we have the splenomegaly, um, physicians actually can palpate the anteroabdominal wall to, to fill this indentation on the, on the spleen. So then the spleen is in the left hypochondriac region. And also remember the spleen actually is derived from mesoderm, however, it is explored anatomically with the foregut organs. So then that's the spleen. Okay, we are gonna, I'm gonna put the spleen back. Then I'm gonna go back to the greater momentum again, pull this down. Okay, and look at the greater momentum again. By the way, between two layers of the greater momentum, we have the storage of the fat or stored fat as well as the blood vessels. Hopefully you can appreciate that these are the blood vessels actually running between the two layers of the greater momentum. The next step of the abdominal cavity exploration or peritoneal cavity exploration is to hold the greater momentum, pull it up, okay? Then we are looking at the area that usually we refer to that, this area as the infracolic region, infracolic region. So in this region now, we can see the transverse colon here, right there, okay? As you see, the transverse colon is attached transverse colon is attached to the greater momentum okay now so we come to the right hand side when we look at the transverse colon you can actually um, follow that transverse colon come to the to the right all the way down then we can find the cecum I'm going to pull the cecum down and then on the left hand side the descending colon actually is locating here so then I'm going to pull that to the left what we have in the middle is the the loops of the small intestine okay so the jejunum and ileum jejunum and ileum the loops of small intestine okay so they are these loops actually are, are kind of the framed by the the large intestine okay so let's um, examine the the fold of peritoneum that attaches the jejunum and ileum to the posterior abdominal wall so in order to do that, I'm going to pull on the jejunum and ileum to the right. Okay, now what you see here, this structure here is a fold of peritoneum that attaches the jejunum and ileum to the posterior abdominal wall. This fold is referred to as mesentery. 
It refers to as mesentery and it acts as a conduit for the blood vessels, nerve fibers, lymphatic, which are associated with the loops of the jejunum and ileum. Okay? Now, now I'm going to actually go to the right hand side of the abdominal cavity here and explore the all components of the large intestine. So remember the expanded part here on the bottom part is called cecum. And as you can see, ileum here is actually joins to the cecum or at the junction of the ascending colon and cecum. That is referred to as ileocecal junction. And right below to that is the appendix. So here is the appendix of this person. Okay, that's the appendix. And this is right there. That is the fold of peritoneum that attaches appendix to the postabdominal wall. Then this fold of peritoneum is referred to as mesoappendix. Mesoappendix. Then the appendicular vessels associated with the appendix traveling um, between two layers of the mesoappendix. Okay? So back to the to the cecum. Then after that, we have the ascending colon. Here it is. Ascending colon goes all the way up. Then right under the liver, it bends, which is referred to as right colic flexure. Okay? And then we have the transverse colon. So then this part is ascending colon, right? So then we have transverse colon all the way to the left. Then we, we reach to the left colic flexure somewhere here, which is right under the Spleen. Remember the spleen was here, right? Under the spleen. So then we have the descending colon. Then we have the sigmoid colon. Okay, right here. The sigmoid colon has a meso, which is referred to as meso sigmoid colon, right there. Okay, and then the sigmoid colon joins to the rectum inside the pelvis. It might be a little bit dark there. We won't have enough light going to the all the way to the down down to the pelvic cavity but here is the pelvic cavity which the rectum is sitting is sitting there right there okay and also it good um, it's worth mentioning that transverse colon has a fold of peritoneum as well this one which is referred to as transverse mesocolon transverse mesocolon okay which act as a conduit for the blood vessels, nerve fibers, and lymphatic associated with the transverse colon. Okay, so that's all about the peritoneal cavity exploration. Have a great lab.